Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this try commentary with myself and two other excellent YouTubers, but before we get into it, if you guys could hit 1,500 likes, that would be absolutely incredible. Just be sure to smash that like button for more daily uploading content. I'd really appreciate it, and uh, see you guys in the next video. You want to know what's funny? What? What? <laughs> I, was, I did a poll the other day, I think you guys saw it, about Batman Beyond Arkham, and then versus like Batman Arkham Origins 2, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, this... What are you... What are you laughing at? Oh, were you not going to call me out? I thought you were going to call me out. <laughs> Wait, no. Because I did the same poll, and I was calling you an idiot. But my, <laughs> oh, 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 my poll got the same results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, your fans are fucking stupid. Mine are, like, next level. And then they voted the same exact way. And I explained to you, we have the same fucking fans. So <laughs> Okay, anyway, so I did the poll, and I was talking about, okay, would you rather see Batman Beyond Arkham, or would you rather see Batman Arkham Origins 2? And two to one, people said Batman Beyond Arkham. But somebody in the comments was like, you can't do Batman, and I don't mean to mock this person, I mean, he's cool, whatever. But he's like, yeah. you can't do Batman Beyond Arkham, because you would be stepping on the toes of the Arkham Knight ending, and, like, Rocksteady's vision. And I'm just thinking to myself... What fucking game did you play in, in which that ending is anything that needs to be respected? Like, it's not. Yeah. It, it's not. Inter <laughs> it's not Inception. Like, you can no, make well, a sequel honestly, to the ending. The ending like... is awful, and it doesn't make any yeah. sense. I mean, it kind of feels like they wanted someone else to pick it up afterwards. Honestly, like, it didn't <laughs> feel like a definitive ending. No, it didn't. And I like the ending of that game is defeating Scarecrow. If you think about it, the ending quote unquote that we see is really a post credit scene and everything that we have is total just speculation just like what we really think like oh it's batman using fear toxin like that's all speculation we don't really know that yeah i mean it's yeah. it's just a joke yeah it's it's really i mean it's left too open like when you look at all these videos, like I, even when I was doing it, I love doing it. Like speculation videos about who it is. Everybody had an idea. It's Azrael. It's Jason Todd. It's fucking I don't know. It's a uh, Batgirl. Like it, it's too <laughs> yeah. It's too open. And it, it, Rocksteady just fucking didn't know what they were doing. And that's the thing is even really good cliffhanger endings. It's like a it's like a coin flip in the sense that well, in you know the case of Inception, it literally is. But what I mean to say is like it's one <laughs> or the other. It's like that's what you're thinking. Like, did they go route A? Is it thing A or is it thing B? But with this ending, it's just like a million different things. You could just like come up with anything out of your ass you're like yeah. oh okay so it's not batman it's a batman clone okay and the batman <laughs> clone is you, you know what i mean like you can yeah. just come up with anything and it's per it makes perfect sense because they don't explain anything yeah Kobe, well, that, when when you're oh, oh sorry yeah when you're uh talking in your video I, I i forgot what you were saying you were saying something about how uh the arkham knight ending basically you know it, it didn't really fuck, i forgot i forgot what you said I, it was in uh -huh. one of your videos about that fuck dude i'm really messing up no you're fine hold up i forgot what video it was uh let me see you're t go ahead jake okay uh <laughs> yeah so so what i was saying is that's kind of what i said in my video today was that i feel like if they just jumped 20 years ahead and said okay now it's batman beyond and bruce is back and like, like i think that that would just be way too premature like you almost need a direct follow-up to explain sort of like like you know, to set up a Batman Beyond game. Like, I don't feel like Arkham Knight left it in a good position to do that. Yeah, so it's almost like you need a stepping stone. And yeah. the, the stepping stone to get to Batman Beyond, the question is, do they want to go through all these steps to do the story? And the answer probably <laughs> is no, but it's interesting to talk about. So what you would have to do is set up whoever you want to be that next Batman is, whether that be Damien or Terry. Terry McGinnis. It seemed like they were actually kind of going a Batman Beyond route with the Damian Batman game, but kind of not too. So that might have been a stepping stone of sorts. But it's just interesting to see that, uh, you know, I just, I guess I just don't really understand like people idealizing the Batman Arkham Knight ending because in some senses mm -hmm. it feels to be very much like a fan ending, like a fan made ending. Yeah. ending it's yeah. just like well, let's think all the craziest yeah, shit we now, can put now in i kind of now now i kind of remember what you said it was about paul dini and how paul dini was carrying the writing staff that's what it was you were saying how paul dini wrote arkham silent arkham city and how those were the strongest stories and how arkham's knight 
was very all over the place and sloppy and how it felt like in my opinion, when when I heard you say that, I, I was thinking to myself, yeah, Arkham Knight kind of felt like a Paul Dini uh, interpretation and somewhat of a uh, somewhat of a copy and, and, and something of a imitation. So when you look back at it with Arkham City and Arkham Asylum, they left things open, they left things kind of ambiguous, but they didn't really. There was a, always a conclusion to it. Yeah, and you think about City, so you have a lot of questions going through your head. It's like. First of all, is he actually dead? If you remember, yeah. for that four years between City and Night, there was a ton of speculation that the Joker wasn't actually dead. Why? Because it's a freaking comic book game. I mean, like, people yeah. come back to life all the time. It, it's not unprecedented or anything like that. So there was that theory that, like, the Joker didn't actually die, and it was a double fake Joker gag or whatever, right? So there was those speculations, and there was questions about would Raish come back, which ultimately he did. And there's a lot of other questions, but ultimately the game has an ending that is impactful, complete, and fulfilling in many ways but in other ways still thought-provoking the Arkham Knight ending is completely different it's so open-ended to its detriment and to in, in that sense you could have an Arkham Knight sequel be a Batman Beyond like game kind of pointed in that direction but you can have some some non Batman Beyond like things in other words it's more grounded in Arkham Knight and the biggest question for me is what happened to Jason Todd because they don't explain that at all. Jason Todd goes from this arc of being Batman's protege to hating Batman and wanting to kill him and then saving his life all in the matter of like a couple years. So that arc is really interesting to me. And what is his future like? What is the future like for other, you know, Bat family characters? I think that there's a lot of loose ends that um, were challenging for them to clear up in that one game, but they could have done a little bit of a better job. So I think that there's a lot that they could do with that. Uh, just, just me. Yeah, and I, I, like, that was kind of the other thing I mentioned, too, is that if they just start trying to jump into a bunch of, like, Knight sequels, I think that they're going to run into a lot of issues with, like, Arkham Knight-ish stuff, where it's like, they're trying to tell story arcs like Under the Red Hood, but there wasn't the buildup. They didn't do the death in the family first. So that's yeah, why I personally right. feel like origin sequels would be better, because then if they want to do a Damian Wayne game down the line, you have sort of it hinted with Bruce and Talia in the sequel. And then you just make the case that Bruce didn't know Damien existed. Like, you could write these sequels that, that you want, but set them up in a better way than just trying to throw them in with with no real reason for them existing in this universe. Now, let yeah, me I've... say one thing real quick, Salvage, and then um, yeah, j- just because I'm going to forget. But um, yeah. I think one of the big problems is with a prequel game, you're inherently limited. And I feel like maybe for Origins, I would love to ask a developer, like, did you feel confined by City yeah. Asylum and Night? Like, do you feel like you could only do what's allowed? You made a great point at some point in the video, I think, talking about Hush. You can't do Hush. You cannot yeah. do it because he doesn't become Hush until Arkham Knight. You get this five-minute yeah. side mission, okay? So you cannot do Hush in the Batman Arkhamverse, and I, I wonder if they feel confined by it. If you do a leap forward by two decades, though, you can do whatever the hell you want as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, what were you going to say, Salvage? Well, well uh, I'm going off of your point, what you yeah. just said right now. Uh, you know, personally, I feel like they're not limited. If you okay. really do a day and night thing where it's spanned out through a couple of days, and you do do this Court of Vow thing, and, you know, Joker's not really involved, he doesn't really know about it, you have these crazy villains that you really never see again in the Arkhamverse, you know, like Tweedledee and Tweedledum, uh, like Killer Moth. If you have those characters, I feel like an origin sequel would be very good because then you can actually have still an impactful story with Robin, with Batman's allies, but you can still tell a very interesting story with Batman's antagonists as well that we haven't seen before in many in, in most media. But with an Arkham Knight sequel, I mean, what do we? We're just going to be running into the same problems with you know the Arkham games where it's Two Face and then maybe he's the Judge and you know it, it's. I feel like if we go too far into the future. We're going to get these super obscure characters compared to what you know we could have in an origin sequel, which they're still, they're really you know still obscure. But compared to like what they would do with an origin or a, a night sequel, I think it would be far worse in that. That's that's a really good point, and I never really thought about it in that sense because it really depends on how far the time jump is, right? So like if you're jumping ahead. I don't know, 60 years, let's say, where Bruce Wayne would be like 90 and he'd be a mentor, then you would have a totally different Two-Face, most likely. Um, Mm -hmm. You could could go that route where it's like 
they use the same moniker, it, but it's like a whole different person, if that makes sense. But so Jason Todd. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, but you make a really good point, though, and I never really thought about it in that way. What do you think, Jake? Yeah, I think it, it's sort of like I, I was saying, I think that the problem is like if they do a time jump that's like 20, 30 years into the future, I think that they're going to alienate everyone who is invested in the Rocksteady games. Like with Arkham Origins, like you're right to a degree with the storytelling like they can't obviously like kill off the joker or something but i think that it would be sort of more of a misstep to try and keep pushing a story forward without trying to do any build up i think origin sequels they could lay down some groundwork for these sequels and maybe if they did a game that took place like right after night or something where like i've i've mentioned like it's no man's land or battle for the cowl or something like i think that that would be fine and it would still be familiar enough, but it could include the Bat family more. So I think either of those routes would be fine. I just think jumping too far ahead right now would be a mistake. You, you know what's a good in between that I heard you say, Jake? It was in your, I think it was in your last video where you said they should just soft reboot it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, just just if it's a night sequel, if it's an origin sequel, just. Do a soft reboot and do what you want to do with the continuity. Uh, you know, yeah. make it clear that you want to do something different. Make it clear that you want to make your own story that's not confined into the Arkhamverse. And maybe say, hey, these origin sequels, fuck it, they're in a different universe in the Arkham games, but they still take place in the Arkhamverse. You know, like you know, you know what I mean. It's like a yeah. different multiverse. So they can do something like that. I would personally enjoy that. It would, I mean, for a night sequel. I think if they said something like that, that would be okay. But even still, with like a night sequel, I still think it's it's super weird. And I think that WB saw that. Yeah, and I, I think that's why it got rebooted. Wait, so would the Joker still be alive in this soft rebooted world? Like, you have to be clear well, about so, what what stays and what goes. Well, yeah, well so, for like so what a soft meant, re- yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so what I meant with a soft reboot was it's like technically it would still be in the continuity of Arkham, but it wouldn't be like you know, restricted, per se. Like, they wouldn't have to stick with the formula that's been done. Like, you know, you think of Arkham right now, and it's like every single game takes place in a single night where Joker's the main villain, and you get some kind of gang war going on. So it would take place in the Arkham continuity, but it would be, like, sort of what they're doing with Court of Owls, where it's a completely different style of game, um, a completely different narrative and formula for that. So it's like they're kind of doing their own thing, and it could still be set in the same universe. Just, or they could have a Flash game come out and say Flashpoint happened, and everything's totally different. <laughs> that, that, that but I don't. Uh, can't you still evolve the Arkham games within the Arkham verse? In other words, you can yeah, have interesting absolutely. new yeah. villains and change I the mean, formula for yeah. it. With I mean, with, okay, you can involve like with uh, pros and cons. I was doing it. I was wanted to do a video about this. Now I have to talk about it here. <laughs> pros and cons of this. I mean, for like Arkham Knight, a sequel. The pros of it is it's a brand new Batman. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Like literally, you can literally change the combat from the ground up. The stealth. If it's Damian Wayne, boo, b- bro. He's gonna be like the League of Assassins, like Damian Wayne, where it's just gonna be a badass running around and kicking everybody's ass, but completely different from Bruce Wayne. If it's Terry McGinnis, then it's gonna be a little bit more of an amateur thing, and maybe we can have uh, moments of just pure weakness and being a complete underdog in most fights. So with that type of thing, you can completely redo it. But with like an origin sequel, the only way you can change the combat is with the talents. And that's it. Uh, and I can't think of anything else besides that. You can't change the combat too much, or then it's just like, why didn't he fight like this in an asylum in city oh, at yeah, night? You're right. <laughs> so like that, that would be a problem. The only way that they can change the combat and make it different is with the talents and have them be a completely new enemy type that you fight periodically throughout the game. Many thoughts. Well said. Yeah, I I don't know. Like, I I agree with what you're saying, and at the same time, like I just. Like, I don't know, I feel like it's been long enough, too, that even if it is somewhat of a generic story again, like, I don't, I wouldn't mind too much, per se, just because it's been so long. Like, you know, if we were getting a game every single year, I'd probably start complaining that it was too similar, but if they start spacing it out with other DC properties especially, like, I don't know, I don't think that, like, I I agree that they need to reinvent it, definitely, and change it up. But I don't think that they need to do anything that's like, you know, going to completely reboot the the Batman franchise. Uh, I guess. Okay, 
Kobe, I got a question for you. Yep. Do you want them to completely reinvent the entire Batman Arkham franchise, or do you want them to stick with Origins? So, I actually would be a proponent for both, but the question is, is that WB Games Montreal has made one game in the Batman Arkham games, and it would be a little bit confusing for people, and they're a bit limited. So, I'm thinking about the crazy things that they could do, like... For instance, killing the Joker. That's the most memorable moment for me in the Batman Arkham games. They can't really do that with any of the characters they're introducing. Now, they can with the Court of Owls. They can have that kind of thing. But in terms of crazy changes to the lore, they're very restricted because Rocksteady, they're big Batman fans. They played it, I won't say they played it safe, but they're, they did a very faithful, let's say, yeah. interpretation to the canon, right? So they could take things in a new direction if they rebooted. So it really is a matter of what game they want to make. If they want to do... A Court of Owls game, they don't need to reboot the Batman Arkham games, but if they want to really change the way the Batman lore functions, and, and you know, it would be very interesting to actually completely change the, the dynamics of the game, the way that the game works, changing the combat entirely, maybe rebuilding it from the ground up, but what you can't do is reboot the Arkham games and like, okay, yeah, we're still using the same engine or whatever, like, you've got to completely change that's, it if that's you're going to sell it, you know? Yeah. That's that's kind of always been my hesitation with a reboot. And the example I always use is Prince of Persia. And that was like, I don't remember how much uh, The Sands of Time the game sold, but that one was like total triple A. It was Ubisoft's thing. They started doing yearly releases on that. And what happened was they did a trilogy and completed it, and then they rebooted it. And it was like, it still was a good game. It had Nolan North as the prince in it, and it was like, it was a fine game. But it was nowhere near as good as the original trilogy, and so people just lost interest, and the series has been dead for, like, ten years. Hmm. So, and, and like, I know that Batman, he's going to sell regardless, so it's a, it's a little bit of a different story, but, I mean, Prince of Persia, like, like I said, it was selling, like, 14 million copies per game, and then just immediately dropped. Right. 